Hey, David Charney here from eLearning Locker. I'd built an activity or challenge to show how to put together a little bit more complex interaction at the Chicago eLearning and Technology Showcase. A couple of people during the presentation had a question on how one part of the interactive works, and so I wanted to show how I put that together. The premise for this challenge is that there's an insurance company, and they want to better educate people on taking pictures of everything in their house rather than just the really, really expensive things. My idea is to put the learner in the environment that they're going to normally be taking photos in so they can really build their experience. They can grab a camera, they can take photos of things in the room, and ultimately it will let them know if they have taken pictures of everything uh, or just the things that uh, seem expensive. So my challenge for this challenge is how do I, because I'm using Storyline, grab a camera and move the camera around, basically look through the viewfinder of the camera and kind of focus and take photos of various things in the room. So as it turns out, it's not as hard as it looks. So let me run this real quick. We start off with a little introduction, inventory challenge. Have a little bit of instructions. I'm gonna begin. A little transition to the scene. I have the camera drop in kind of a little late and bounce a little bit just to draw your eye to it. So you know that's kind of the, the key thing you wanna grab onto. If I click and drag, you can see it turns to a camera. I can drag it around the scene. I'm gonna take a picture of, uh, you know, any of these items here, uh, these lights. And you can see the light show up here in a little picture in the right corner. I'll grab the camera again. I'll take a picture of the TV and there's the TV. And then I'll take a picture of this bookcase and there's the bookcase. So uh, from a usability standpoint, it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it, but then you could click all done and ultimately you'll get kind of a dialog box letting you know if you've taken pictures of everything yet. And I don't have all that programmed yet, but uh, program's the right word. Uh, but ultimately, the, that's not the key part of this video that I'm going to show today. So let's go back. I'm going to hide everything in this scene so we can focus on the, the key items. There are three main pictures to talk about. One is the background scene. One is the little camera here. And if I jump into states... The third is this camera here. Now this is the most complex image in this scene, so I wanted to show how I set that up. So let me show you how I put this image together really quickly in Photoshop. Uh, first off, here's my image. Uh, I wanna cut that image out. Uh, you could use the pen tool, which is probably the smartest way to go, but uh, I don't always go with the smartest way. I uh, am gonna go with the quicker way for me in this video, and that is to uh, click on this tool here, the magic wand tool. I'm going to select the white and it's going to do a pretty good job of selecting everything in here. You can always up the tolerance a bit uh, and I'm going to hit delete and it's going to delete out all that white. Now if I zoom in and I make the background black so I can see what I've done, I'll see a lot of little jagged pixels here. Uh, you can always go back, and again, the pen tool would get rid of this from the start, but you can go back and just kind of, if you make sure you're on the right layer, clean this up and uh, have a pretty good looking image pretty quickly. So you can see at least where I've done this, it looks a lot smoother. To go over the whole image will not take very long. So there we go, a little bit cleaner now. So we want a big background, and the background is actually pretty big, but I'm going to shrink the image down just a little bit. We can take the black box we built and drop the opacity down. And maybe we'll turn the white back on so we can see how light or dark it is. And then I want to cut out the box here, because I want this box to draw your attention to it. So if this is a lot brighter than everything else in the scene, your eye will uh, kind of make its way to it. So I'll delete that out, and then I have to delete out the white box, or sorry, the black box as well. And see if I turn off this background again, you can see it's transparent. And I'm actually gonna raise the opacity just slightly on that black box. Now if you wanted to, you could come in here and draw some little white lines, like what you'd see on the camera. You know, do a couple of those around so it looks like there's a little bit of a, 
a viewfinder window. Just like that. So if you have a darker scene, I'll add a little bit of a black color to this. You can see that there's a little uh, viewport now. And then you want to extend this arm a little bit. just in case someone you know, moves the image way up into the corner. You always have to make a judgment on if this is gonna look the best. In this case, I'm gonna do it quickly, but I am going to just extend this out and I hit Control T so I could drag this box around and I'm just gonna make it look a little bit more uh, just make it look a little bit more extended here. And I actually need to drag this up a little bit. And then I will, then I'll use the eraser tool and just kind of blend it just a little bit. So that should be good. From a distance, no one's going to notice that. And then save that file as a ping, and you're all set to go back into Storyline. Okay, back in Storyline. We've got our three images, but we need this state to change from this camera to its camera big state when you click and drag it. So how do we do that? To do that, I created a hotspot that covers the entire window here. Then, if we look at the trigger here, I want to change the state of this picture to camera big, so the big picture of the camera, when the user drags the shape over hotspot. So when you click and drag this, you're definitely going to be dragging it over the hotspot because it takes up the entire scene here. So whenever you move this, even a pixel, it's going to switch to the really big picture of the camera. Then what we can do is create a number of little hotspots. So you can see them there, there, and there. The question I kept running into is I normally have a little trigger that says if this object is over one of these hotspots, uh, then show a dialog box or change a variable or keep track of something somehow. But in this case, the image is huge. It'll cover all three hotspots at once. So in this case, we can use the kind of where the mouse cursor is. And if it, the mouse cursor is over a hotspot, then we can have something happen. And here, let me show you the actual trigger for that. So you can kind of ignore this for now. I'm going to change a variable when the mouse is hovered over hotspot 2, which is one of the little hotspots. So as long as the mouse cursor is hovered over any of those hotspots, something will happen. So now I've narrowed it way down, and I can control exactly where I've got that viewport hovered over. And the reason I know that the mouse is going to be hovered over that viewport, not somewhere else over that large image of the camera, is because they have to click the little version of the camera to move ahead, to switch it to the large version of the camera. And because the little camera is right over the viewport, when they click and drag, their mouse cursor is going to be over that viewport. So I know that, that viewport's, if that viewport is over the hotspot, then that mouse cursor is also over that hotspot. And once I make that work, I can really do anything else I want in this project. So again, I'm not going to go into too much detail outside of how to take the photo, but uh, I've got three objects here, three images on in, in the scene. And within each of these images, I have a, uh, a, all the images for the scene. Uh, and right now I've got three, but I'm going to create more. I'm going to shrink them down a little bit so that any I have got enough space for any uh, for a photo for each little element within the scene. And as you can see, I've got uh, a different image for each uh, state. So, you know, I want someone to be able to take pictures in any order. So if they click the TV first and then the lights or the lights and the TV, I keep track with some variables to say I should show the first image or the second or the third. And then if they are this, if it is time for the second image down, for instance, I, I have another variable that says use the lamp instead of the TV, and then it knows to go to the right state. So as I keep taking pictures, it keeps looking like I'm just taking a picture in any order uh, that I want. And then again, I'm keeping track of variables, so it'd be pretty easy to then have a dialog box that says, whoa, you've not taken all the pictures yet for this scene. 
uh, to build experience, you'll want to make sure that you take all the pictures uh, of all the uh, items in the scene. Or you can say, you know, great job, you've taken all the pictures of uh, everything in the scene, uh, you know, and then reinforce that, uh, uh, that this is valuable in case there's ever a claim later uh, on their insurance. And that's it. That's how you can take photos of things in the scene. Hopefully you can use kind of the same approach or elements of the same approach to create different uh, activities or challenges that can really push your, your learner to uh, try things out and build experience uh, within your courses. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe to get a uh, notification of when more videos come out. I'll get this storyline file on elearninglocker.com so you can download it and play around with it yourself. Happy learning.